Welcome to my next video. Who is Satan? What is Satan? will be the topic of the day. To help explain what Satan is, I'm first going to cover a subject that will help you understand how Satan was created. Here is a video that was aired on television that I'll start off with. The participants lay their hands flat on the table and begin calling out a name. Are you there, Philip? I want to see you, Philip. Soon, the table begins to rise, as if it had a life of its own, to the surprise of the participants. Shortly afterwards, it seems that Philip no longer wishes to remain in the middle of the room. As he heads toward Reverend King, the table moves with him. And the eight mediums have a hard time keeping their hands in place. Once the table stops, one of the participants suggests to the clergyman that he say hello to Philip. Uh, hello, Philip. The table rises in response. The only problem is that Philip doesn't exist and never did. Philip is an imaginary ghost. In the fall of 1972, Dr. George Owen, director of the Toronto Society of Psychical Research, came up with a unique experiment. With the assistance of three men and five women, who had no particular gift for communicating with the spirit world, Dr. Owen conducted one of the most significant experiments in the field of parapsychology in the 20th century. They created Philip, the imaginary ghost. Philip the Imaginary Ghost was a, an attempt by the Toronto Society for Psychical Research to prove that paranormal events could be created without the help of spirits from another plane. He wanted to show that living beings, through some mechanism that has yet to be explained, could project their energy onto material objects. Dr. Owen asked the group of eight, as they were called, to imagine the fictitious character with a name, age, gender, and nationality. They came up with Philip. We took them several months before they had worked out the details of the character they were going to create. So it was 1973, I think, between eight and nine months later, that the experiments actually began. The group sat around in a circle with a picture of Philip in sort of a meditative state, trying to produce an apparition. And after a year, uh, nothing happened. No phenomenon, no apparition. Then at some point, they changed their strategy. And suddenly, they began to see results. Like wraps on the table or under it. And the table began to shake and move. These were physical things that could be recorded. Give us a sign, Philip. Philip, are you there, Philip? Philip's manifestations were far from what they had hoped for, but still, the group would ask a question, and Philip would answer. Surprisingly enough, the answers always corresponded to his alleged biography. As the seances progressed, Philip became more enterprising. After a few raps on the table, he would raise it off the ground and make it dance on two or three legs. Philip, are you there, Philip? Encouraged by the astounding results, other groups around the world tried the same experiment with other imaginary characters. The results were all basically the same. So this experiment shows that through expectation, imagination, and visualization, entities can be created using the human mind. This understanding can explain a lot about gods or energies that are created and worshipped to this day, but this video will mostly focus on the energy known as Satan. In reality, there is no Satan, for Satan is simply a creation of man, just as Philip was a creation of these eight individuals. If eight people can create a personalized energy, imagine what kind of effect the creation from eight million people is doing. 
As I mentioned previously, Satan is the same being as Yahweh, Jehovah, and the Egyptian god Set, who are in turn nothing other than the planet Saturn in an astrological quality. The Persians were the ones who originally changed the name from Saturn or Set to Satan, and thought of the planet as though it were a person. It wasn't until the mid part of the Christian age they borrowed the Persian teachings of Satan and created the Satan that is known today. In other words, the Christian religion created this entity, this energy that they call Satan by believing so strongly, for they are being told to believe so strongly in him. Saturn wasn't originally thought of as evil per se, but if you watch any sermons on Satan, you can easily see how the idea of this evil being was formed. Satan is only real if you choose to believe in him. If you believe Philip or Satan to be real, then they have the ability to have an effect on you. Because this energy of Satan is thought of as a being of great evil, then the effects this energy would have on you would be very negative indeed, unless you believe that this being would be your ally as it is with practicing Satanists. When you truly understand that Satan is not real and is in fact an illusion, then the energy disappears for it can no longer affect you. The same would happen to a person talking to spirits. The moment that they stopped believing the spirits were real would be the moment that they stopped talking to the person. Things are about to get a bit more complex. While Satan isn't real, there are a race of beings playing the part of Satan and the devils who are very much real. These are the beings living outside our realm of time-space in what I understand to be the lower fourth dimension known as the Reptilians. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where... Um, I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Kirk had no illusions about where his growing success came from. I got on the ground and I clawed the earth. I told Satan, I said, if you give me what I want, if you make me a god, if you give me the women and the drugs and the fame and and everything, and you give me the power to crush people, I will serve you until the end of time. Within two days, I was offered a recording contract. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Music came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. Notice the eyes from the Snoop Dogg video. Keep in mind that these reptilians have the ability to time travel. They believe that they can get you to sign a contract giving your soul away for a temporary material desire like fame or money. They believe that selling your soul away now gives them the ability to affect you and use you in future lifetimes. A lot of people being abducted over and over again who are harvested for certain glandular substances may have previously sold their soul to these beings given a written contract allowing them for this reason. Some people who have memories of their abductions are told that they had agreed to it previously. However, they cannot affect you if you realize that you have a choice. After all, if you have a child sign a contract that they don't understand, does it make sense to hold them to it after 20 years? The simple act of understanding who they are and why they're doing it gives you the power to say no. I'll finish this video with a clip from the ending of Labyrinth. With the understanding about what I have just talked about, you should be able to understand who the Goblin King or David Bowie represents. I might cover this film in better detail later since it's one of my favorites, but for now check this ending out. Give me the child. Sarah, beware. I have been generous up until now, but I can be cruel. Generous? What have you done that's generous? Everything. Everything that you wanted, I have done. You asked that the child be taken. I took him. You cowered before me. I was frightening. I have reordered time. 
I have turned the world upside down, and I have done it all for you. I am exhausted from living up to your expectations. Isn't that generous? Through dangers and tones and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the castle beyond the Goblin City. For my will is as strong as yours. And my Stop! Feet. Wait. Look, Sarah. Look what I am offering you. Your dream. And my kingdom is great. I ask for so little. Just let me rule you. And you can have everything that you want. Kingdom is great. Damn. I can never remember that line. Just fear me. Love me. Do as I say, and I will be your slave. watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.